Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Kageyama, and I'd like to welcome everyone here to To Be Your Own Hero. And um, I'm sitting in back uh, with my backdrop on the mountains. It's kind of cold here, but I know everywhere else it's uh, really hot. There's a big heat wave going on. And actually, I'm in Southern California. This is a virtual background. Uh, we're in the midst of eight straight days of 100 degrees. So, you know, hopefully it'll uh, cool off a little bit. You know, even five degrees would be nice. But uh, I am so thrilled and happy to bring back Michelle Beck, who we finished off in our last video. And we're going to talk about some things that Michelle's doing. And, and I just love what she's doing. And, and the way she has grown uh, throughout this journey. And we're going to have a great discussion. So put on your seatbelts and let's get going with this interview. Michelle, please introduce your, reintroduce yourself and uh, let's get going with this because this is going to be fun. Mark, thank you so much for having me today. And I wanted to share at the end of our discussion last week, uh, we had stopped recording, but I had showed you a sign that I have that I keep in my house, which I think really fits with this. And it's hard to see, but it says, there we go. Um, and it says she needed a hero. So that's what she became. And I feel like that fits so well with what you are doing here with this podcast, finding individuals not myself, but others who are literally have gone through so much in their cancer journeys and have found better parts of themselves because of it, because that is 100% what I have done and what you have done as well. So thank you for doing this. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about uh, becoming your own hero. It's something that could be different for absolutely every person. And, and so to hear that story and different stories is is just such an incredible blessing and it and it just makes life so much better it really does and uh so let's let's get into uh our interview here and the conversation so why don't we pick and up I, I apologize because i didn't introduce myself because I, I go on tangents. I squirrel all the time. So my name is Michelle Beck. I live in Portland, Oregon, formerly of Southern California. I am a wife, a mother of one 12-year-old son. I have four bonus kids, 18 to 26, and I am a two-time breast cancer survivor. So that's the nutshell right there. Okay, great. Great. So let's talk about, let's pick up where we left off last, last time. You know, we talked about your cancer journey. And for those who haven't uh, taken a look at the video, take a look at part one so you're kind of caught up. Let's get into this one and let's talk about uh, uh, the group that that you happen to stumble on. Perfect. So I'm incredibly fortunate that I found a support group after my second go around with breast cancer. And I really didn't think that I needed support. I was more so going in to volunteer. My son was in school at that time. I had been a stay-at-home mom, and I was just trying to find out who I was again after being a stay-at-home mom, having cancer twice, and what to do. And I walked well, in- Let me pause you right there. That yeah. That is an incredible thing that you just said. You wanted to find out who you were. Cancer changes you, you oh, know? 100%. And, and let's talk about that. How 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 did cancer change you? so many ways. I, I'm i in the process of, I'm writing a book right now and I'm editing it. And just this morning, I went, I was reading through a chapter called Control is a Big Fat Lie. I have always been a person where life was black and white. Everything had its place. I followed the rules and I, I really thought that I had control over my life. And getting a dog well that took away some control and then having <laughs> four stepkids that took away a lot of control and then a baby but I'm like I still thought I had full control over my life and then cancer came along and I was like what the hell is happening there there truly is no control over external things in life but cancer showed me that I'm really in control of my own decisions and so that was a big lesson that I have learned is one aspect of how it changed me and then 
I've also... How did it change you through the process of cancer? How did that, how did that affect you? Knowing that when I met with my oncology teams both times, they were telling me, this is what you need to do. They're professionals. I listen to them, but it's those decisions. They give you decisions, but they're in this little circle of this is what you need to do. So it wasn't like I had a whole lot of control. I could say, yes, let's go do this because I wanted the cancer out of my body. That was my main objective. And so I listened to what they were doing, but I was also learning that, wow, I don't have a lot of control over what is actually going to happen, but what I have control over is how I react to what is happening. In that entire process, I realized that sometimes you have to just let go and learn from the wisdom of others because they know what they're doing. What what about the way you looked at yourself? How how did that change? Because obviously there's been a a a shift and a change in your life. So how how did that develop? Oh, definitely a lot of changes in my 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 physical being. I have voluntarily given away all of the parts generally that have labeled me as a woman my my breast my uterus where i gave birth all of those things they're gone from my body because of cancer and so that is really hard to deal with i will honestly say that and the emotions that go with all of it i i went through a very deep depression and anxiety heightened. I always have had anxiety, but the depression part of it really hit hard. My self-confidence went down the drain after the second time I went through this because of the massive changes in my life and in my body. And over time, I needed to, I had to stop feeling sorry for myself. And it took a couple years to do this, but one of the things that I'm a huge proponent of is therapy, which I think we mentioned the last time around getting out of your situation and being able to talk to someone else and say all the things that you need to say. And then they can actually kind of talk them back to you. Like, okay, why do you feel this way? Can you look at this in this way? And I was able to realize that in my heart where it really matters, I'm the same person. And I needed to learn to appreciate the things that I still have. I'm still here. I still have a body that supports me and gets me through every day. My, no one looks at me differently because of what I have been through physically. You know, the most important person who would really, that I I care about their opinion is my husband, of course. He still thinks I'm hot. He still wants to, (laughs) you know, he's still madly in love with me. And I had to learn again to be madly in love with myself. And it took some time, but I definitely did that. And now I kind of love myself even better because even though cancer was in my body, it wasn't my body's fault. And I've just really had to learn that I'm still me and I'm a better version of me now because I've been through this and I figured out how to come out on the other side with grace. How long did it take? for this process of honesty to really catch hold? And was it like an aha moment one day? It was like, I get it. Or or was it just real gradual? Or how how did that process work for you? For me, it was definitely gradual. I would go, my therapist helped me a lot. Um, One of the first things she had me do was get out my anger about the cancer. And I had to draw it. Like I had to go home and I had homework and I had to draw my cancer. And, and what I wanted to do to it. And so that I got out so much anger. And then other times we went through and we talked about finding a safe space. And there's this whole like guided meditation that we went through. But really it was over time. Uh, I would say a couple years, honestly. I'm six years out now from my second diagnosis. And I would say probably half, about three years ago was really when I was finally like, I'm good. <laughs> I had been reading a lot of books on self-help ish, but more so like finding your way in midlife. Cause I'm 52 now and I've been through a couple careers. I've been a stay at home mom. 
But now I know so much more about life because of the trauma that I've experienced, but also how to heal by coming together with other people. That, that's been a huge part of my world now was also getting to know all the women who've been through this and come out on the other side. At Breast Friends, I found this community and I looked at them and I'm like, wow, they're not any less because they've had cancer. They're actually fabulous because they've come through this and they're here supporting other women. And so it was by, it was a multi-step, very complex process of getting back to a better place. And also writing was really big for me. I would, I was able to write out my feelings, the good, the bad, and the in-between and realizing, oh, I'm a, I'm a pretty good writer. And then I realized, <laughs> oh, I actually want to talk about this and I want to be on stage. So it really I've blossomed in so many ways after cancer because of what I went through. So a young Michelle, let, let's say you're in your, uh, in college, could a young Michelle see today's Michelle? Oh, no way. <laughs> Definitely not possible. At I will give you a, a little story here. My first job, I was a paralegal at a very swanky law firm in downtown Los Angeles. And there was only two paralegals and 30 some attorneys in, in this, in the LA branch. And we had to go on a retreat. And I was like, oh, this is fabulous. Until I learned that I had to speak. Everyone there had to speak about something. And I'm like, what am I going to, I was 23. What am I going to speak about to these 30 individuals who are wicked smart? And I, I was panicked. And I had to, they, the assignment they gave me was to talk about patent law. I don't know what could be more boring than patent law. I had absolutely no interest in it, but I had to find something to talk about. And for 10 to 15 minutes, which not a long period of time. I mean, now I could talk forever about my cancer, but patent law, no, thank you. I was panicked. I literally, I wrote it out and I stayed, uh, I read it to myself so many times in the bathroom mirror that. I almost memorized it. And to this day, I swear I got up and did it and I completely blocked it out because it was so traumatic for me. <laughs> and now I'm at the point where if you give me a subject that I'm passionate about, can't, breast cancer advocacy, helping others, I can talk all day. I put me on a, that, I mean, ultimately that's what I would love to do is to be, I would love to have my book, go out on tour, talk about my book, talk about how you get through trauma and become a better person. And in college, no, would have <laughs> never crossed my mind. It, it, it's amazing how things change us as we, as we age and how we look at things, uh, how differently uh, a, as we, as we, uh, get older and, and mm -hmm. so it's a, an amazing process of life uh and i think one of the the things that cancer does is it forces you to face your own mortality and, and when people have to do that there's something that's transformational uh in their life uh and, and in their being uh that affects them in ways that they had never experienced before don't you think 100 percent, and it makes you it really throws in your face how lucky we are to wake up every day you know i'm currently ned but breast cancer quite often comes back or it metastasizes so you're dealing with metastatic issues right now but your attitude and your positivity and how you've worked through this I'm sure before you went through all this, you would have never thought that you would have been here as well. <laughs> no way. <laughs> not, not even a chance. Uh, but but that being said, I am so thrilled that I am. Oh, absolutely. And you would never know it if I passed you on the street. I would know that you're dealing with, you know, metastatic prostate, lung and bone cancer because you look healthy, you have a smile on your face and your attitude doesn't show defeatism or depression. And I'm sure you have moments where it's like, oh, this is really hard, but you have found such a good place because of 
the experiences you've been through at life and how you want to continue to live every day. Oh, no question. No question. That's uh, cancer. You know, like we've always said, you know, we wouldn't wish it on anybody, but it it's absolutely unequivocally changed me forever. I, 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 and, and I'm so thankful for that because I believe that I had to see and, and experience the very worst. And, and I went through the very worst. And that gives you, I think it gives you perspective. It gives you perspective to appreciate the good things. And, and there's so many good things in this, in this life and uh, in this earth and how beautiful it is. And, and, it gives you an appreciation and it gives you a totally different outlook than, you know, previously had. So let's talk about, <laughs> we, we keep going on forever about this stuff. This is a great know, stuff. Tangents and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Yes. Let's talk about breast friends and, and some of the things that uh, you're doing with them and, and your, some of your relationships there. Yes. So, I honestly can say that breast friends really got me through and out of my cancer hell hole. I guess I can say it like that. I, my treatment, I didn't go through chemo. I didn't, you know, I, I'm, I'm not metastatic. I had surgeries and medication, but the changes that came from that were really hard. But once I walked into the door of breast friends and found that I was embraced by a community of others who get it who I was now walking in their shoes and they could give me a path, I quickly realized that in addition to volunteering, I needed support, which I found. And as I had said previously, I signed up for everything possible the first time I walked in the door. And I didn't leave for over five, five and a half years almost. And I still to this, and the reason I left earlier this year was because I've been writing a book for almost 10 years in terms of my writings and my musings about cancer. And it was really important to me to finish that. And I'm kind of at the place where I want to kind of wrap up my cancer journey and move forward. But Breast Friends, what they were able to provide for me in support and education and just a community, I cannot thank them enough. They're still doing so many wonderful things that they do virtual workshops. If anyone is out there with breast cancer, they have navigating your diagnosis over zoom they have survivorship over zoom they have metastatic meetings over zoom so please go check them out at breastfriends.org but also when i was there they realized that i was incredibly passionate about helping and so they asked me to be a guest back in 2018 on the podcast which i eventually ended up taking over called breast friends cancer support network and it was about finding your twinkle after cancer. That was a big word to one of the founders was finding your twinkle. And for me, it was sharing. I now consider myself an over sharer because nothing is <laughs> off limits. And so after the first time I was on that podcast, they're like, wow, you're a good talker, which obviously I can talk all day. And they started asking me to do media for them. So I was able to do interviews for upcoming events. I, over time, have been on multiple local interviews with our news stations here. I, I was always the one to go up to the microphone at events to talk about how amazing Breast Friends is. And I also was honored to be a keynote speaker at the 2018 luncheon that they put on. And then for three years, I was also the MC after that of the luncheon. So I get to get up and essentially, you know, run the room, give the laughs, um, and I love that. I love being able to be on a stage and share to inspire people. I'm also a Leo, which I love to be the center of attention. I'm sure that has something to do with it. But I, I never thought that I would be so passionate about speaking. And so they gave me that opportunity where I've, I've really grown so much. And eventually that I would love to be part of my career going forward and I've also learned that in sharing, I'm helping others. And that fills my heart so much. And in the writing that I've been doing when the time that I was with Breast Friends, 
I have so many women there who are like, oh, we can't wait for your book. We can't wait for your book because even though I do talk a lot, I don't share everything. So it just, it gave me the opportunity to grow and shine and realize that people do want to listen when I talk. And I love that. <laughs> but you, really you, you just... mentioned, I'm sorry to interrupt. You yeah. mentioned a word that's one of my favorite words. And, and I want to just briefly talk about it. And the word that you mentioned is passion. I, I, I love, I just love seeing passion in people. Mm -hmm. I love seeing, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love shows like, you know, uh, America's Got Talent, where, Great you know, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> I, I love that show. In fact, I went to the fine, I went to a live finals once and it was spectacular. Fun. But what I love to see, you know, like is after a performance, you know, per person performs and, and they go before the judges and then they start uh, breaking down and crying. And that always tells me how much that what they did means. Yes. So let's let's just briefly talk about your passion in in cancer and, and what you what you aim to do and and why it's you are so passionate. So I to me, passion is like that burning in your body that you have to do something and you're so excited about doing it for for many reasons it could be sharing it could be making making yourself feel better about something but whatever it is you are you will you want to go there and you want to get it done and i have realized that i have so much i always joke that i have enough breast cancer knowledge to be dangerous but <laughs> i just i want to share because i want people to know how important certain things are i didn't have support from an organization while i was going through treatment I wish I did. I 100% wish I had walked in the door the first time, the first day I was diagnosed because my journey would have been different. Hopefully a little less painful, a little less depression, a little less traumatic overall, but I didn't. So I, I do consider myself a patient advocate for breast cancer. I was able actually, I'm so passionate about what I've found and the things that I've learned. I've, I've written about them in a few articles that were published. And one of the things that I had the ability, well, to do, I found a, a test on Instagram called the breast cancer index test. And I was on aromatase inhibitors, which were very challenging for me. They're preventing cancer from coming back. Yay. But the side effects were debilitating for me. This test allowed me to have my tumor tested to see if another five years of those that medication would work. I did not want to do another five years, but I would if it would have been helpful. I took this test in conjunction with my doctor and I found out that even if I did another five years of that medication, my potential chance of recurrence, which was at 2.9%, would have only gone down to 1.8%. And so my husband and my husband and I had to do a quality of life assessment. How much is another five years of pain and suffering from the side effects of this medication, is it worth taking my recurrence rate down 1%? We decided no. And I stopped my medication and I'm a whole new person. I don't have the pain. I can, I mean, this, I've written about this extensively. Um, there's an article out there with um, Savio Clemente. Oh, I, I know Savio. That. Oh, it's so funny. The breast cancer or the cancer community is amazing. He does wonderful articles. So yes. I did one of his articles in The Advocate. Did you do one as well? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I, I do yeah. so much stuff after a while. I don't even know what I, I know. Did. <laughs> so the company who is responsible for the breast cancer index test found my article, reached out to me, and I started doing social media for them. I was a patient advocate at the breast cancer convention last year. And I got to go meet so many other amazing individuals who are so passionate about this. And so that is just one of the ways that I've been able to show my passion was to, to speak. And I kind of feel that way about anyone who's going through the breast cancer journey, if, or any cancer journey, if, if you pick up on one thing that I say that helps you, I feel like I'm a success and that's why I'm so passionate about it. 
Beautiful, beautiful. I when I started this channel, I just wanted to, wanted to help one person. Exactly. And, uh, you know, after a few weeks, uh, one person showed up, and and then it uh, evolved, and now it's all day long. <laughs> I mean, I as much as I want, I want to engage with people. I could, I could find that, or or people come to me, and 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 I just love it. And I think one of the and for you as well, I, I'm sure is the satisfaction to help somebody and really make a difference is just it's indescribable and that's what has kind of led me to where i'm at now in my life since i did leave breast friends earlier this year i started hosting my own podcast and it's not about cancer it's about people who are putting good out into the world by good works, good things, good organizations. It's called We Rise by Lifting Each Other. I'm new. I literally just started in January, so I only have 13 episodes right now, but it fills my soul so much. A friend asked me, are you making any money on that podcast? I'm like, no, this is a passion project for me. My goal is to get money or volunteers or people to help out at these organizations that I'm talking with. Um, recent, my last episode was the Autism Society of Oregon, who literally provides resources and education for people's improving people's lives who've been affected by autism. I've spoken with an um, association called Brave Hearts that does equine therapy for kids and veterans. I spoke, um, I just reached out to a woman this morning who I saw as one of CNN's heroes. Her name is Stacy Buckner, I believe, and she runs an organization called Off Road outreach it's literally up on my tabs right here because i just sent her a message this morning and she literally drives around and helps give veter homeless veterans showers food basic hygiene haircuts all on her own and she's a nonprofit. Wow. she's not even a veteran but she's doing this because it is so important to her and those are the individuals that i want to highlight that is what i want to do going forward is highlighting how we can help each other how we all heal together through traumatic experiences by helping each other and how much that giving to others helps yourself. So that is my current goal in life is to really just keep highlighting and finding these amazing individuals and organizations who help other people just because. So how do you do that? Um, I, I stock a lot of online websites the today show has a lot of great headlines people magazine has wonderful human inspiration stories i've gotten like three from people people respond there was one an organization called liz away's lights a young young woman a teen she's 12 um she literally started a nonprofit to provide night lights to kids in foster care mm. and like i read that in people and i reached out and they got back to me and that's how i found brave hearts and um, on CNN headlines. That's how I found the off-road outreach or just people that I know. The Autism Society here is uh, one of my best friends has a 20-year-old autistic stepson. And so I asked her, um, I have friends who have trans children. So I reached out to Basic Rights Oregon to talk about how they're expanding, expanding rights for people. And it's literally just whatever sings to my heart. I was in the vet the other day with my dog and I saw an organization called paisley paws who help out individuals with emergency vet bills that they can't afford you know it's literally things that speak to my heart um and i reach in there you know i don't hear back from everyone but i do from quite a few and i just want to share good that's out in the world that that is a great great thing to do and thank you for doing that uh and, and you're helping to make the world a better place. And I, I always, always for that. And I love that. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Because if, if more and more people would do that and, and just look to help uplift somebody else, uh, th that's how this whole world of ours can get better. And, and we live in a very, very, uh, difficult world this is probably the most difficult uh the world has ever been from sea to shining sea and beyond you know i talked to 
people from all over the world and 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 there's turmoil going on it seems like everywhere and, and i i think one of the most important things is people always have to know no matter what situation that they're in that there is hope yes. and, and as long as there's hope then there's a way and, but if there's no hope then that that's when it, it, it's just really 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 difficult so yeah I 100% that... agree that and that's why I'm also putting my writings out there as a book and um, if anyone's interested it will be out in the fall it's going to be called I never liked pink and other things that cancer taught me I never liked pink is my social Instagram well one of them I have two but that's where I talk about all things cancer and it's funny I that is my social media but if you if you could see my desk everything is pink once I got breast cancer I embraced it because it felt it actually made me powerful a lot of there are there is pink backlash about many things but for me it connected me to a community so it's it's very tongue-in-cheek that I never liked pink because mm -hmm. I mean I have I have a pink ribbon tattoo with boxing gloves on my arm it's it's now a huge part of my life but that's something that I learned and I talk about in the book like how it changed for me over time so it's, but if I can help one person with anything that I've learned, I, I feel successful. And that's, you know, getting my words out there or talking about the good that other people are doing. That's what I'm focusing my days on that and making my 12 year old grow up to be a good human. <laughs> that's, that's the important things I've got going on right now. So once your book comes out, what is your ideal what is the ideal thing that you want somebody to take away from your book? In other words, once a person's read your book, what would you, what would warm your heart the most that they would take away from your, your writing? That no matter what kind of trauma they go through, there is always hope. There are ways to move through, whether it's finding your people, finding ways to re-energize your life, figuring out what what you personally learned from this. I learned that I'm stronger than I thought I was. I'm much more resilient. I'm a great writer. I I have a wonderful voice that people want to listen to, not the tone of my voice, but that I have important things to say. But really just, we all have it within ourselves to find new things, no matter how old we are or what we've gone through in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So why don't we wrap up this interview? And, and it, it's, it just went by in a blink of an eye. No. <laughs> we, we, we always engage and, and enjoy listening to each other, what each other has to say. So what are your final thoughts that you want to leave our audience with this week? Well, Mark, I'm so thankful to be here and that we met and I so appreciate that. It's funny, I, my final thoughts that there's so many that come at me. Um, you can do hard things is one of them. Um, be your, be your own hero is another, but just really, sometimes you have to go through a lot of heartache to come out on the other side. Essentially, it's like the, the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. When you're in that stage where you're, where you're wrapped and you're tight and you, you don't know what's going to happen. You kind of just have to let yourself go sometimes and see the beauty that's going to come. It's, you know, for me, cancer has been kind of like a different form of a school. You know, I didn't enroll in it. It just put me in the school and boy, did I learn a lot and I've taken it to heart. And it's and it's meant the world to me. The things that I've learned, uh, it wasn't fun. A lot of the things, but a lot of the lessons that I've been able to learn and experience have have just been life changing. And for that, I will always be grateful. Hundred percent, I agree. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's been been a blast, absolute blast. I appreciate you. And good luck with your the success of your book and your podcast, and and uh, we'll we'll be uh, connecting further down the road, I'm sure. 
Uh, there, there's no doubt about that. I'd like to thank everyone here for joining us here at To Be Your Own Hero. Please subscribe, like, and keep in mind, I've also started a Rumble channel. And so if you go to Rumble, the, all every video that I post on YouTube will also be posted on Rumble. And so that's been uh, a learning experience. I'm learning how to how to work that that side as well. But it, it's so important that everyone make the most out of every single day. And I'd like to share at this time a couple of quotes uh, from Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. The first one is, the great secret of successful living is to change your thinking from wrong to right, from error to truth. And then the second one is, and I love this one, absolutely love this one. When you get up in the morning, you have two choices, either to be happy or to be unhappy. Just choose to be happy. You'll be a lot happier overall. It'll make for a great life. Absolutely. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us here. Let's all band together and help make this world of ours a better place. Uh, you know, whether it's smiling at somebody, offering help to a, a, an older person walking across the street, whatever it may be. Uh, say hello to somebody at the bank, smile at somebody. Let, let's, instead of dividing, let's come together, help people, engage with people, because that's what it's all about, and make the most out of every single day, every single hour, every single minute, as well as every single breath. Have a great week, and we will see you next week on to be your own hero. Thank you so much.